Hello, fellow schoolmates. My name is Stephen Gitch. I'm an Indy 1T8 plus PUI, and I would like to represent you as your next Vice President of Communications. If elected, there's three main improvements I would like to focus upon. First, opening more feedback channels directly from the students to EdgeSoc. Secondly, improving event outreach and visibility with the help of some guidelines. And lastly, sweeping quality of life improvements to EdgeSoc services. With these changes, my goal is to make EdgeSoc services more efficient, more visible, and easier to use for you, the students. Beginning with feedback channels, I'd like to create a platform loosely akin to speak up, but for the services that EdgeSoc offers. The goal here would be to have an always open feedback platform where students can give feedback, suggestions, and more. A major aspect would be the ability to remain anonymous when giving feedback, or give a return email so a conversation can be opened. This would be a platform where one could leave feedback for many affiliated groups and have it delivered as fast and seamlessly as possible to the relevant parties. A centralized hub of sorts for NSOC feedback. Moving on to improving event visibility and outreach. The school calendar has created a great central location for extracurriculars. Unfortunately, it tends to get cluttered due to how some groups manage their events. For example, some events span multiple weeks for tentative dates and never get updated. With the LGMB, I've implemented a two calendar system. One for internal use with tentative events, and a second public calendar that is reflected in the school calendar, band plasma, and elsewhere. I believe a similar system could be implemented for most groups. Additionally, a short description or a link to a page with more info would be encouraged. Having to do research greatly reduces one's chances of going to an event. These are just a couple guidelines I currently have in mind, and more would be fleshed out with the head of club heads and other leaders. Related to this, I'd like to better utilize some communication infrastructure that's already in place. The school plasma and projector have massive levels of foot traffic nearby every day. They are a perfect place to display this week's upcoming digest events or other information pertinent to students. For example, during the suds, the plasma could display next coming train times at Queen's Park Station. There's also the NSLOC display case in BAM that could reach out to a whole other group of people less likely to be influenced by the aforementioned. Finally, I'll speak of the quality of life improvements to NSLOC services. Changes range from the simple, like updating the main links on school.ca to be more seasonally topical, displaying announcements that are relevant to the every student, front and center, on its homepage. These, up to some more substantial changes, such as having digest quiz be categorized and searchable by category, date, and other criteria. These would help people find events that specifically interest them. To help discovering changes that should be made, I'd like to start a small team to review individual services and gather their suggestions and feedback. Working together to make the service as you, working together to make NSLUC services use as easy and effective as possible. I hope my presentation got you thinking about what could be done in terms of improving outreach and NSLUC services. I'm happy to answer any questions when Alexia allows. Thank you for your time. So I'm going to let Dale go first, and then I'll let you guys go through the questions. Or Yeah, so my name is Dale Gottlieb, and I'm running for the role of Chief of Communications. So you might know me right now as Editor-in-Chief of the Canada Newspaper, which is one of the pillars of communication here within the Engineering Society. So I'm running for VP Comics. I've had an interesting experience over this past year of running the newspaper. And what I find is that every single time we publish a new issue of the Canon, I get three or four emails back from uh, faculty and staff talking about our writing and wanting to publish it uh, to tell their classes about what we're writing about. So what, what I think is interesting about this is that it shows, although the students have you know, their, their own opinions of the canon and communications within the student body, things like the canon are uh, a means for outreach between the student body and faculty and staff, and the faculty are the ones who are capable of making changes within the school community. So what I've found within my five years here at school, I'm a one sorry, this one is PUI, is that the canon I could solely attribute it to changes in the student chance, um, a general increase in inclusiveness at school, as well as uh, a decrease in nepotism within student clubs. So as VP communications, I'm running with the same platform as what I did when I ran for the canon, which is generally more openness and inclusiveness to people who want to write their opinions and get it published um, for faculty and staff to see. So one of the things which I wanted to implement this year, but um, could possibly do through the Engineering Society, is just the, uh, a blog platform or some some means for students to write their opinions without being held back by the timeline or the the bureaucracy of the student club and hopefully this would allow for more students to be able to provide outreach to um, 
faculty and departments on their opinions in school. So as qualifications, I, I, um, I'm currently running one of the main pillars of the communication uh, within the Engineering Society, and I like to provide help to things like the TOEIC, which you probably have a good understanding of as well. Um, and uh, I've worked closely with the archivist and everything where, where uh, we work together for center spreads and articles around school. So I, I, within the pillars that BPCOM oversees, I have an understanding of how all of them work. And I'd like to continue the trend of communications and openness within the school community and uh, provide a means for students to get their ideas out there to faculty and staff. Yeah. Thank you. I feel free. It's an awkward chance. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so now, yeah, if you guys both want to head up there, um, I'll let you guys take questions. Uh, first, um, before we get to questions from everyone else, if you guys have questions for each other, is that the case? Yes. Do you? Do you? <laughs> if you don't, that's okay. Uh, no. 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 Okay. So then we'll open the floor to questions from the general audience. It's uh, fine. Go first. So this is a question to both of you, actually. Um, one of the largest criticisms that the engineering society receives is the fact of the way and the frequency in which we do mass communication to the student body. So there's a lot of people that feel we actually they actually get too many emails from us or too many posts from us. Um, this year here we worked towards cutting that down, but we still actually did receive some complaints on some frequency of it and even the methods of doing so, so I'm posting on Facebook and not everyone's on Facebook or getting the notifications. In terms of mass communication, do you uh, guys even initially have any ideas either on improvement or continuum was done or just ways that we can um, kind of continue to improve that so people are getting relevant information in a timely manner and still knowing about everything? Um, I'm just interested to hear your thoughts on the, the mass communication aspect. I'm not going to tell you guys, but just try to hear it specifically. Give you the second response. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I guess it, it's students complaining about emails and uh, and mass communication. I know myself when I there, there's people on Facebook when I see them post like you know it's easy to ignore it sort of thing, right? Um, so I, I, I think there could be. Um, sort of a, a centralized system, because I know BPCOM oversees the website as well. Um, possibly something where you can post notifications there and then students have the opportunity to check. Um, and then it could be a once a month notification thing where people click on it and they see notifications um, from a previous period of time. Um, another thing which I always look into is, is the emails over Facebook. So I, I do think emailing is one of the most efficient ways to get communication across the students. and. Um, Possibly announcements as well within student classes, like student bodies of uh, class representatives and stuff. Students would listen to that as well. So, yeah. Um, I agree that generally email is the best. There's people who are not on Facebook, on a large Facebook user. It's very easy to ignore. I do see additional opportunities being had with just, say, the homepage of school.ca. Um, think of things that would normally be sent out as an independent email announcement, say, photos. That, stuff like that should be difficult to find if you're looking on the school website. You should be able to go to the home page and there'd be a prominent, say, announcement section on the front page. This is not School Digest, not the calendar. These are bench slot announcements. These are, I kind of see School that's being another good source for that because people can direct it and uh, it be a thing. But I agree. For most communications, email seems to be the strongest because it is universal. Everyone has an email address, and you don't have the risk of uh, leaving someone out who's potentially going to be very good for your community. Great, thanks. Uh, yeah, just remember to keep your voices up because of the recording devices. Yeah. Um, so, in the, I'd say probably the past two years, um, the VBCOM has been pretty adept with um, sort of like web development and being able to make changes around the pipe, like school.ca or similar um, things like that. Um, so my question to both candidates is, so how do you your current kind of web dev experience? And if it's not great, is that something you either want to kind of improve personally, or would it make you more cost effective to kind of just delegate most of that work to the webmaster, working with them obviously, but just like how would you kind of approach that, assuming you don't if you don't believe that your uh, web development skills are like as good as they necessarily could be in that role? Um, fairly moderate web development background. I've recently uh, rebuilt toboggan.school.ca from scratch to better meet the new brand guidelines that I've laid out. Um, I also ran the band website, revamped that. I am 
very comfortable with front-end web design. Uh, Back-end is definitely an area in that I would like to work closely with Webmaster. Server-side scripting is not my forte. Making things look pretty and like laying things out in an effective manner, I would say that I'm strong in that. Yeah, um, so I, I don't have any experience with web design. I program at work, hopefully I can learn it, I guess. I, I would work closely with the webmaster, which I'm currently doing already this year with the, with the Canon's website, um, which is back up today after after being out for a while. So um, it, it would be kind of a close role with them, and uh, just making sure that, that the layout and everything looks, looks appropriate. And um, yeah. Um, you mentioned like you wanted to create a platform similar to Fiddle.co.ca. I'm wondering what kind of data are you hoping to collect on it, or is it just supposed to be a platform for people to like submit comments? Like, how are you planning to to aggregate that and make any changes to any new things that ends on the screen? So I think, say, a affiliate organization decides they want to harvest the feedback through this platform. They would have the opportunity to lay out how they want their feedback. So, say they want something scored, that, that would be an option presented to them. Every group will have sections for general long form feedback and how you feel, say, about the leadership or anything. And um, then, my initial idea would be to have, say, a daily automated system that will send an email. If feedback is presented that day, every evening, an email will go to that affiliate organization's head, their highest body, and um, it would be formatted and they would receive the feedback in that way. Okay. Uh, just probably one yeah. more, and like, this will be the last question. Okay. Um, I have a quick question for Steven. Um, so, you were talking about the guidelines for the school calendar. Um, when you're working with clubs, they're one of the most important kind of stakeholders with engineering society, and it's one of the biggest ways in which we kind of like face the students. Um, how do you plan to enforce those guidelines, or what would you say would be the method in which you get close to using? Um, I think initially, at the beginning of the year, I would like to meet with club heads and discuss how they currently market their events and what internal systems they use to manage it, and how they think they can best reach it work together to develop this set of guidelines. I, I would never plan on actively enforcing it very extremely strictly and sending an angry email every time someone does it. But I think if you get a general consensus amongst groups that, hey, this is best for all of us if we all work together on this, I think there's a very strong possibility that people will follow these guidelines. Additionally, document them. Make them real easy for people to follow flowcharts. <laughs> I'm in India. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I think that'll wrap it up from our PP communications canvas. Thank you guys.